Okay, so this part we're going to tackle getting some seeded data set up. Right now in a seeds file on your DB folder, there should be some comments of ways you could go about this. Um, I tend to do this just to save myself a lot of time and keystrokes. I would recommend you do the same. Uh, typically when I do this, um, the old tactic to just get rid of some data before just recreating some new one, just to kind of make sure it happens is to say, destroy all on your models, depending on what you're creating. So I'm creating a user and booking types. Uh, I, don't, I won't create bookings. We can create those, you know, manually, I think. So booking type, destroy all. Now there is new commands with Rails like DB plant replant or something like that that does kind of that approach. I'm gonna leave that one alone uh, for you to go check out if you want to. But the whole point here is to create some dummy content and doing so will make things quicker and easier for us to get rolling with certain features. So I'm gonna just do J Smith for a shorthand email J John smith at example.com name john smith password um, device requires this so i just set a generic one obviously you should not use password for password but this is all de development environment stuff so i'm creating a new instance of user and assigning it a local variable so we can use it for our booking types so booking type just call it one equals booking type create and i use the the exclamation point here so if something were to break when that gets created it will give me an exception and kind of point me at what went wrong uh, although otherwise it will kind of fail silently which is the default way bear with me here so duration this is an integer so let's we'll say 15 location zoom uh, name, I'm going to call these 15 minutes meetings and then payment required false uh, price is no since we don't have one and then user you could say user ID here if you want to be explicit you could also just say user user that's kind of nice uh, so let's create two more Be sure to name them differently. And I give it different color codes. So FBB F24. This one's 30. And three. This one will have payment info. So our last one will be three, four. D399, we'll call this one 60 minutes, so 60, and then 60 minute. You could do short for like one hour. That's a nice little one hour. And we'll say true for this. Price will be like 125. So this is thinking in dollars. Stripe and whatnot considers the integer, when you pass it through, you need to do it in cents. Um, so we'll have to do some converting, which is pretty easy, just multiply by 100. But it's something to consider when you're adding this. Some like to pref you know, keep it as cents from the start. I just kind of do it because the user's not going to enter cents and know what to do with it. I don't want to do anything like in real time. So they'll, we'll do it on the back end instead. All right, so with that done, we should be able to run a Rails DB reset. And it should hopefully clear out the database and bring us in some new data, which we just created. It might bork because I have the server running though. So let's see, yep, okay. Let's go over here, quit that server. Your bin dev, run that again on this one. There it goes. Now if you, you're not sure like if it worked or not, sometimes it takes some time, but uh, you could also do like a puts command here. And maybe I'll do like emojis or something. So hit, for grins, you could run it all again, and it'll just reset it all. Where did I add the wrong? That's not right. There. So now you know, hey, that fixed it. We could just say, um, 
reset complete or something if you really want to get fancy. All right, that should give us a opportunity to go visit the app again. There's going to be nothing there again and you won't have your account anymore. So keep that in mind. So you'll have to say John Smith or whatever test user you want at example.com password. Now we got three here. So let's do the UI portion of this view uh, on the dashboard view. Let's make sure this looks a lot better than it does. So I'm going to go to home dashboard um, on the booking types partial. That's where we're going to spend most of our time. So I'm going to get rid of like basically all this and start from scratch. Views, booking type, and under that we'll have a link to the whole shebang. So we'll say edit booking type path will be where we end up and we'll just pass in the booking type here. Class, this will be the main container. So P6 border shadow XL rounded XL block hover shadow large transition ease in duration 300 relative overflow hidden um, this is where we're going to do some fanciness with that background color we set from the database so we'll say div class h1 it's kind of a hack with Tailwind. You could do this in different ways with traditional CSS. Tailwind, it's still possible. You just have to go about it a little differently. I feel like I could do a course on Tailwind, but I feel like everyone has done a course on Tailwind. So it might not be a good idea. If you think I could, let me know. Or should, I should say. All right, so there's our background. This is just going to be an empty div. It's going to be some way to signify, hey, these are our containers, and the top little bar has our nice little uh, highlight color that we added in the seeding data. So that's cool. So H3, oh well. Give it some title, class, font, medium. This will be the name of the thing. Sorry. Okay. All right. Gives us our name, 153060, pretty cool. Uh, below that, I made a helper method here for duration. And we'll say booking type, if I can spell. Uh, before I do that one though, I'm gonna add just a, like a P tag that's gonna be class text gray 500 kind of looks like the link itself, even though it's not, it gives you a little prompt to do something. Uh, the whole thing is a link, so even if you clicked anywhere, it would still work. But that little text kind of gives you like, oh, I should click that to view it. And this is all geared towards the back end, so only the person who created the booking types will be able to see this UI, even though in the, in the actual live view, it'll look the same. So we'll get that rendered here in a second. But let's fix this up and create this helper. So I created duration helper. That's going to be in our app helpers. I think I made it under booking types helper. Yeah. Which should be generated if you ran the scaffold. So if you go into the helpers, booking types helper, it should be a module in here. So this will load, you know, no matter what, since you have it there, but it's just a nice way of organizing your stuff. If it relates to the booking types, multiple developers on a project will know where to look. So we pass in the type here and we'll just say, I'm just doing this as a shorthand to turn like an hour into more of a, or 60 minutes into an hour format. So duration equals 60. We'll say return one hour, otherwise return the, the duration. And then add some strings. That gives you some minutes. So 30 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, kind of cool. 
All right, back to the booking type. Let's go and do the conditional logic for if a payment is required. So we could just say below all that if booking. Now that's a Boolean, so we can just have a built in conditional. You just add that question mark at the end and it should say, you know, like yes or no or true or false. Then we'll just have an MT3, PT3, and then border top for some styles. Nothing fancy here. We'll have payment required. And then another P tag, strong price. And then below that, or just alongside that, Rails has a, a nice helper for currency, number to currency. We can pass in our booking type price. There we go. So since that one's required, it's going to display. All right, so that gives us basically the starting point. You can go into these. You can edit them at any point. You can change this one. Say we don't want payment after all. Update it. It won't display there. Yada, yada, yada. Great. All right, so going back to our like account view, though, uh, if you want to enter, which would be nice to put like your actual landing page link on that, that view, but it's not a big deal. So on this view, we will kind of want to render the similar UI. So I'm going to do that now. And this is our users show page. And I'll honestly pretty much copy this down. We're going to link elsewhere is the problem is the difference. So we'll say users booking type, paste this in, and we're going to say new user booking path. Now here's the trick. So we're going to pass in our booking link as a parameter. So we'll get the instance of user booking link and then also the booking type. So we can save that when the time comes. So we'll say booking type name. And then I like to make a sure, make sure it's in a format we can predict. So parameter, parameterize kind of gives it a slug like look. And for these, uh, well, new users, okay, we need the routing here, so routes. So here's where it gets a little tricky. We have J Smith here. Um, if we add this path, it kind of borks. It's assuming there's some stuff going on that shouldn't be. So what I end up doing is a similar um, scoping mechanism that's gonna go to our booking link. as user do and then we'll say resources bookings only index and new fallback so I'm gonna do index and new on this one so we're like basically removing them from this resources but adding them back from these resources if that makes sense so the front end users can be able to kind of do this I think I'm gonna do a forward slash there there. So that's confusing. But what I wanted to happen is go to this direct URL. That's the user's profile name and still render all these bookings, uh, the new, the new booking path in a way that makes sense. So now we get this scoped view that takes the parent level of booking link. And then with below that is bookings now, and then the new, and then we also pass the booking type as a parameter. So we get the name of that as a way to denote what's coming through on the back end. All that to say, let's configure this form on the bookings page. So it'd be bookings new. So this one's going to be a bear because we need to add our payment setup stuff too. And uh, in the next part, I think I will do that. Uh, but first, maybe I'll tweak the UI just slightly. So let's go to bookings. All right. So at the very top, what I want to do is say, um, Schedule your booking. And then we could say if payment type booking type the payment required, which we need to go to the controller and, and add an instance for that. We'll do this.
this is going to error out for now, but we'll say that else. Um, kind of a similar text. Schedule your booking. Basically like that. That gives us a starting point. And then we'll do a different form up here for if it's, we'll do a new form here that's like a stripe based form coming up. So right now this shouldn't do anything because we don't have booking type in the instance. So if we go into our controllers, bookings and new, we need to add an instance of that here. So booking type will be equals booking type find by name I think params booking type there we go schedule your booking so now we're rendering uh, the basic stuff here uh, we obviously don't need status in this field so I will remove that that's a back-end one but we do need the others and if we want to add notes, we can add that here too, maybe. It would be rich text field. And area, excuse me. Cool. Now, if it were me, I'd remove like pretty much all these options like to attach stuff and whatnot, but up to you how you want to handle that. Um, and then this we could probably say grid grid calls to gap like six just to make them in line. And remove the margin on the bottom of that one, but put it on this one. There we go. Maybe a little more. Okay. So not perfect, but hey. And this one, honestly, we don't need first name, last name. We could just have name. The first name of person, Jim, should handle this for us. Uh, Want to make sure you go to the booking model and add that helper method there, if you haven't already. There we go. And okay, so if the whole goal here is if there is a payment required, we want to render a Stripe form above this before you create the booking, you know, and then otherwise you're just going to be able to create the booking. And then let's see if we have this booking at save, we could do another conditional here if uh, booking dot. Actually, I'll, I'll come back to that. We just want to do if if the you know payment was made or not. We'll figure something out with that. Okay. In the next video, let's add Stripe support. So we'll add for the, the one that matters in this case, we'll add this one's showing different because there's no form yet, but we'll be able to add the new form that's going to render in the, in the place of this. So we're able to do the Stripe form and handle that correctly.